The Dark Prophecy is the second book in the Trials of Apollo series by Rick Riordan. It is also a sequel to The Hidden Oracle. In this video, I'll give my thoughts and review of this book. As always, a spoiler warning for this book, and with that, let's get started. I'd rate this book a 4.5 out of 5. It was a fun and quite a roller coaster ride for my emotions. Plus, the ending made me pretty shocked and excited at the same time. Despite that though, I feel like I prefer The Hidden Oracle over this one. If you've watched my review of The Hidden Oracle, then you'd know that I really love that book, with me rating it a 5 out of 5 stars and praising it throughout that video. I would say that The Dark Prophecy is my least favorite book in this series, because there were just a lot of slow moments in this book, but in the end, I loved it. The Hidden Oracle ended with Leo and Calypso agreeing to help Apollo find the second emperor, and The Dark Prophecy opens to Apollo, Leo, and Calypso walking on a street. The three of them are then attacked by Blemie, but luckily, they were saved by the Hunters of Artemis. So Apollo, Leo, Thalia, and the rest of the Hunters go over to the safe house called the Way Station, where Emmy and Joe live. The two of them are a couple, and as far as my memory goes, I think that they're the first lesbian pairing in the Riordanverse. So anyway, Apollo, Leo, and Calypso stay there, and the Way Station becomes their home throughout this book. A side note, Leo trying on that shirt of Joe and Emmy's daughter Georgina had me laughing, and that just made me question just how short Leo was. I mean, Leo was like 15 or 16 years old, and he was able to fit in the clothes of a 7 year old. But speaking of that kid though, Georgina, I was pretty sad for Emmy and Joe because they've been searching for Georgina for years, and I understood Emmy's anger towards Apollo. You see, Joe and Emmy got Georgina when Agamethus came to their house, and Georgina was an orphan. But, what really shocked me was that Apollo might be her father. And even by the end of the series, we don't actually know if Apollo is Georgina's father, and I really wonder about that. I don't know if Rick left that mystery on purpose, and I wonder if we'll ever find out the truth. Another thing we learned in this book is the fact that Leo and Calypso were having relationship problems. They kept arguing throughout this book, and it honestly made me pretty sad, because both of them sacrificed a lot to be with each other, with Leo almost dying to find Ojigia, and Calypso giving up her immortality and powers. So for them to argue a lot in this book really broke my heart. So the main reason why I decided to read this book in the first place is to know who the second emperor is, and so far, what we know about him is that he's said to be the new Hercules. And through a dream, we realize who this new Hercules is. And in that dream, Apollo realized that the emperor was Commodus. And Commodus was Apollo's ex-boyfriend. I mean, I was stunned. I don't think that really happened in history, but if that's shocking, then the next fact is extra shocking. If you know about Commodus in Roman history, then I don't think you'll be as surprised about it. But if you don't know, Commodus, as in the real-life Commodus, died because of a person named Narcissus who strangled him in a bathtub. And in order to incorporate that in this book, Rick made Apollo be disguised as Narcissus. And yes, in this book, it's revealed that Apollo disguised himself as a mortal guy named Narcissus, fell in love with Commodus, and when Commodus was turning evil, Apollo used his powers to strangle him in a bathtub. To be honest, I felt pretty bad for Apollo, because it was pretty clear to me that Apollo still felt bad for what he did, and he still had feelings for Commodus. Another person we had to talk about is Letirces. According to Leo, he, Jason, and Piper met Letirces in The Lost Hero, and I had to backtrack a bit because I didn't remember that. And then I realized that Letirces was the son of King Midas, who was cursed with the Golden Touch by Leonysus in the myths. And with that information given, I instantly remembered him. I would say that I have mixed opinions about Letirces, because he was the new lieutenant of Commodus, but for some reason, by the end of this book, Apollo decided to save him. Letirces would go on to live in the way station, and even by the Tower of Nero, aka the last book in the series, Letirces is still there. So overall, he became a good guy. So then, the goddess of nets, Britomartis, comes in, and order Apollo and Calypso to find her harpies in exchange for information on the second emperor. While saving the harpies, 
Apollo and Calypso came across the Terces, but they were saved by someone I didn't know would come back into the series. And that person is... Meg. I was shocked because I thought she would just side with Nero, and though Meg was torn about going with Apollo and against her stepdad, I was really glad that she was there. When they arrived back to the way station, Bridomartus held her part of the bargain by telling them where the second emperor was and how they were captives inside. What really shocked me was that Georgina was a part of it and that they needed the throne of memory to cure her because of the Oracle of Trophonius. This made me extra sad for Emmy and Joe because one, they lost their daughter and now we realize that Georgina was a captive of Commodus. Eventually, Apollo, Meg, and Leo managed to save the captives and were able to get the throne, which was surprisingly just a white chair. Like, I was expecting something grander, but okay. And then, my second most favorite part of the book happens. The three of them end up in the stadium, and Commodus ordered people to attack them. An entire fight happens, and it ends with the hunters of Artemis and Festus coming to the rescue. Like, I just love this scene so much. Also, this was the moment when the Terces sided with Apollo, and all of them left for the way station. When they arrived, Georgina sits down on the throne of memory, and the Oracle of Trophonius talks in Georgina's body. It tells everyone that Apollo should go down to this cavern to face the Oracle, and the message ends. Then, a quite intense scene happens. Meg and Apollo go down to the cavern, and there's just this scene when the Oracle shows moments of Meg's life. Like how Nero killed her father in front of her, and how Nero framed it on the person called the Beast, which is an aspect Nero formed in Meg's mind. It's just so bad, and Apollo tries to help her by giving her mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation. Like, this part is just so crazy, and what added up to that was that the way station was being attacked. Apollo and Meg run there to help, and a full-scale battle was happening, and we even see Lit helping in the fight but this time, it's against Comodus. What really made me sad was that it was revealed that Festus was broken, and if you've read the Heroes of Olympus before the trials of Apollo, then you'd know just how much Leo cares about Festus. I mean, the first time Festus broke down was in The Lost Hero, and Leo was absolutely heartbroken. So Apollo runs into the scene where two Germani had both Leo and Emmy captive, and Comodus was right in front of them. And then, Apollo did something insane, like he had this burst of godly power and was able to blind Commodus. It was a quick job, but it did the thing. Commodus couldn't see, and with Laterces taunting Slash guiding him to a window and Calypso's burst of wind tighten his powers, Commodus literally went out the window. And with that, the battle ended, and a prophecy was released. Based on it, Meg summoned another person who I didn't think would come back to the series, and it was Grover. Grover Underwood from PJO and Heroes of Olympus. And thus, the book ends. So with that kind of cliffhanger, I immediately want to pick up the third book in the series, which is The Burning Maze. And like I said earlier, even if this is my least favorite book in the series, I still loved it. So, the question for this book is, is Calio toxic? Calio is the ship name for the Leo and Calypso pairing, and this topic has been going around. And I chose this question specifically for this book, because I think that this is the book that made people think this question. If you watch my review of the House of Hades, aka the book where Leo and Calypso met and fell in love, then you'd know that I thought of their relationship as a bit insta lovey and rushed. Despite that, I was still okay with their relationship. So for this question, I would say that I'm in the middle. Half of me feels like it is because there was not that much of a grounded friendship between the two of them, and like I said earlier, their relationship was quite rushed. Like, I didn't really feel Leo having that much concrete feelings towards Calypso until she suddenly kissed him before he leapt on that raft. Like, it was after that kiss that Leo sort of questioned what he felt about her. But the other half of me feels like it isn't toxic, because I think that they did love each other. Like, again, if they didn't really love each other, then why would they give up so much to be with each other? 
Like, Leo is quite literally in love with her when he arrives back to the rest of the Seven in the House of Hades. And he even gets mad at Percy after learning the fact that Percy forgot Calypso on that island. So it's quite clear to me that Leo had feelings for Calypso. On Calypso's side, she could have stayed on that island in order to have both her powers and immortality, but instead, she chose to be with Leo. She made that choice on her own, and for her to be bitter about that in this book sort of throws me off, because she should have expected that. Okay, so let me rephrase that. She did expect it, but she was quite simply frustrated about it, like how Lester couldn't use his godly powers. Like, it was that kind of deal. They both expected it, but they still felt frustrated with it. So overall, my point is, Calypso and Leo's relationship is a bit toxic. But like they said in the Tower of Nero, if they did get a break from each other, it'll probably work out. So how about you? Do you think Kalia was toxic? Let me know in the comments down below.